What's up guys, how you doing? I just thought I'd do a nice little video here on why Kylo Ren must survive. Rise of Skywalker is nearly upon us and with each passing day we move ever closer to the supposed finale of the Skywalker saga. Throughout the last two films we've seen Kylo kill his father, the beloved Han Solo, pretty much everyone's favourite scoundrel and to some people, everyone's favourite character. Then he decided in The Last Jedi to ditch his Vader wannabe self even trashed his mask too. Truly becoming his own person. For a moment it seemed as if the light and the dark were fighting alongside one another. The first time witnessing this in Star Wars history. Besides the epic moment that was in Return of the Jedi where Vader sees his son in agony and in pain and becomes Anakin Skywalker once more throwing Palpatine over the edge bringing balance to the force, or so we thought. But for such balance to continue, light and dark will be needed to grade themselves, if you will, learning from one another and evolving as one. At least in my eyes, that's just the way I see it. People like to think that Kylo is uh, beyond saving, but look at it like this. He's either going to go down with the ship, or he will be redeemed. That's the only two ways it's going gonna, it's gonna to end for him, and... I know that's just like pointing out the obvious, but we, we know that there's only two ways. There's no, there's no third way. Um, he killed his father with the light pulling at him and him, you know, he, you could see it. You could see the conflict within him and credit to Adam Driver and his um, acting ability because he really pulled it off. Then he was attacking the resistance ship head on in The Last Jedi and having the opportunity to off his mother just like he offed his father. The moment in the trailer when it was released that we all gasped and yelled at our screens and went into a rage fit. Uh, then in the trailer we all, s not in the trailer, in the cinema we all sat there in suspense wondering, is he going to do it, isn't he? And then a mere few minutes later we see him break free of Snoke's clutches and give him the Darth Maul treatment. Um, that was a nice little thing, Ryan Johnson, I like the little Easter egg. And for a moment we see a glimmer of hope in what is the best moment in this movie besides maybe Luke on crate with the walkers that 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 stakes a claim for being top dollar Ray a person who believed Kylo to be a complete monster then develops a belief that she can help him she can save him sound familiar to you sounds familiar to me only to again you turn and take Vader's route of tyranny and have full intentions of destroying both the Jedi and the Sith alike. For everything that they've done, he wants nothing to do with either of them, and he wants both of them gone. As he says, let the past die, kill it if you have to, uh, kill it if you have to, or just let old things die. And you can see, Kylo may just be the most important piece of this story going forward. The most important. Look at the title. Rise of Skywalker. What does that mean exactly? So many questions. So many questions. Luke. Leia. Anakin. I mean, hell. Let me just grab it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'd be a fan either way. Um, but I think it's bigger than that. Skywalker will become the new order going forward. And think about it like this. Anakin always had an etch of darkness in him. From the minute Qui-Gon found him, he always had some kind of darkness. In a deleted scene um, from Phantom Menace, there was this, uh, there was Greedo, um, by the way, not Hello Greedo, the YouTuber, um, the, the the alien Greedo that Han shoots first, I don't know what especially it says, it says, and it's a young version of Greedo, so he was a little, little piece of work then, and him and Anakin are engulfed in a fight, and, um, you can see already that, you know, he has this urge when someone challenges him, he, he doesn't mind getting confrontational. It's a little sign of things to come. And hey, you know, we've all had fights when we were kids, but you can just sort of see the nuggets that have been placed throughout the story and woven into the storyline that it's all kind of led to this. And um, then you have Luke, uh, a boy who always looked to the horizon to the or to the future to the horizon as a wise jedi put it and he liked through and through and he always honestly believed he could save his father until it got to the point where he threatened the only other loved one he had 
besides his best friends, that would be his sister. He pulls out the lightsaber, embraces the darkness, and goes full crazy Satan on him. And for a, gl a glimmer, for a moment there, you see Luke in, in what I like to call Vader form. He was in his Vader format, if you will. He was ready to commit to the dark side without even, without even knowing it. But he was strong enough to pull himself away from everything that the dark side stood for. And he said he'd never turn. And, you know, regardless of how we see it in The Last Jedi, it's part of canon. So we've got to go by the, the canon rules. I'm not the biggest fan of what they did with Luke in The Last Jedi or The Force Awakens, but, you know, it, we've got to make peace with it. Um, we see in The Last Jedi how he pulls a lightsaber out to Kylo, but it's done in, in, a, in an act of fear. In an act of fear that he feels the same thing will happen again. I mean, if you think about it from Luke's perspective, right? If you just think about it, just, just if you really think about it, Luke has... Um, Hang on a minute. Is that better? No, I don't think so. I think it was just a little thing. Um, if you really think about it, for that one moment, that one moment he was in fear. He pulled his lightsaber out, Kylo turned around, saw it as something else and maybe like an assassination attempt. And then it led to everything that happened next. But if you look at it from Luke's point of view, he has grown up all his life wanting an adventure. And he never ever realized until he really was introduced to Ben Kenobi as Obi-Wan that his world was so much bigger. And that he was put into hiding and then to find out he had a sister. And then to find out that the Jedi are pretty much extinct. And to be given the mantle of the Jedi. To learn the Jedi's failings. To learn the Jedi's history. To learn what happened to the Jedi through Order 66. Um, and, and the Jedi Purge. Uh, the Great Jedi Purge. You know, that's a lot of information to take in. So when you have a student who is pulled to the dark side. Who is of your bloodline. And you you see somewhat of you know your father in him but not the father that you saved the father that you were hidden from it's bound to make anyone have a moment of desperation and the same thing in return of the jedi he had a moment of darkness he came back down to earth and pulled himself out of it it's very weird to say earth when it pertains to star wars um and then in the last jedi he looks at his lightsaber looks at kylo and he's like what have i done what have I just done? So he was never fully dark side, but he always had that, that, that little piece of him that might have been. And he is the opposite of what Anakin is. Um, but Kylo is the opportunity for what both of them haven't been, which is redemption and making everything right. Learn from the failings of both. Because if you think about it, Luke is light, failed. Anakin, dark, failed. Combine them both. And then you have Yoda's lesson. Failure is the biggest teacher of them all. And, you know, despite The Last Jedi having some issues, that quote can be applied to anything you do in life. Failure is the greatest teacher. So that's a nice Yoda quote for you right there. But imagine it like this. This is how I see the, the end fight happening. Because it's quite clear that it's going to end with Rey and Kylo having a duel in the Death Star with... You know, water exploding all around them as they're wielding their lightsabers. Um, for those of you who have seen Pirates of the Caribbean 5, Captain Salazar um, takes over Will Turner's son. He possesses him. And he says to Jack Sparrow while they're fighting, if you cut me, you cut the boy. So it tells me that maybe, just maybe, Palpatine is to return, not in physical form, because his physical form is gone but his entity his astral form still remains and that would tie into everything that would tie into luke holding the lightsaber over kylo that would tie into kylo killing han that would tie into every single thing that palpatine has manipulated these people from the very very beginning 
So even if they kill him, he still wins. If they don't kill him, he wins. If they kill him, he still wins. Because I think Kylo is his contingency plan. I think he will possess Kylo. He will be fighting Rey. Rey will be on the defensive because she doesn't want to hurt him. But then eventually it gets to a point where maybe... Because if you remember in the trailer, Finn and Poe are with Rey before they go on to the down Death Star. They're with her. So either they're going to have to separate them or they're going to go with her and they're going to die. Now, the reason I think that is because if you've got the Emperor possessing Kylo and trying to make him this, this evil entity of darkness, not necessarily of the Sith, just of dark, pure and honest dark, what better way to throw Rey off of her scales by killing Finn and Poe? I hope they don't do that, because we still need a Finn and Poe buddy cop series. I I'd love that. It was a big missed opportunity in The Last Jedi. Absolutely missed opportunity. If you remember back to The Force Awakens, when it opened... Focus. Focus. Ah, come on, there we go. If you remember back to The Force Awakens when it first opened, um, the opening of the film where Finn and Poe, like, escaped together, like, that, that was cool. It was a bit, um, didn't really make a whole lot of sense, um, but... The chemistry was there, and you bought it. Then all of a sudden, Poe disappears for half the film, because they're originally going to kill him off. Then they bring him back, they don't tell you how, and then they release a comic about it. And that's another thing. Movies need to stop releasing comics and stuff to fill holes that you create by, you know, doing plot... You know, by making big plot holes that are hard to ignore. You know, you... But hey, you know, it gives Poe a little bit more backstory, so there is a positive. Um, but yeah, I can totally see something like that happening... And then that's going to lead into the two possible endings I see for Rey and Kylo. Rey will no doubt land a killing blow to Kylo. This is where Kylo Ren dies. But this is where Ben Solo is born. Now, whether Ben Solo is born to be like as his physical self or he just comes back like Anakin did, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I fully believe that's exactly what they're going to do. Um, fully fighting Palpatine off and saving everyone as a hero to rewrite all the wrongs done by the Jedi and the Sith alike. The Jedi for being arrogant and, you know, so far up their own, uh, you know, to not see what's coming. They're being clouded and all that. Then you've got the Sith that are just hellbent on causing havoc and destruction, control, power. But then you do see that the Jedi are somewhat similar. So it makes me think the new order will be Skywalker going forward. I mean, this is all just speculation, but Kylo and Rey, at least in my eyes, need to be the reason balance is born, with the Force Ghosts giving one last breath and making one final stand against Palpatine. One final stand, once and for all, bringing peace to the galaxy in a showdown of the ages. That would be fantastic. And here are two ways that I can see it going. Obviously, as the weeks go along and the next trailer is released, which I think is in the next few days. So keep an eye out for that. And I'm going on holiday, right, in a couple of days. If it releases while I'm on holiday, I'm going to be angry. Um, but yeah, um, I can see it really ending two ways. I'll have more ways as time goes along. But here are two ways. Rey will kill Kylo and carry on the legacy in Skywalker format. No Sith, no Jedi, Skywalker. And she'll carry on the legacy. Kylo Ren will be helping her save the day and that will be that. Uh, Skywalker bloodline in the final movie will be gone. I'm not the biggest fan of that, but you've got to throw all options out there. They could still do that. Option two. Now this, this one I really want to happen. Rey and Kylo bring balance together. They bring balance to the Force together. And the movie ends, because they said the final shot of this movie will blow your mind. So I'm thinking it's going to end with a binary sunset in the offset, like in the background. With all the Force ghosts saying farewell to Kylo and Rey, or Ben and Rey, as they begin their next adventure. And it's going to end with the sunsets, and then Skywalker is born. Not as a person as a legacy and you know 
for me, Kylo is my favourite character in these new movies, and I think, despite how I didn't really enjoy everything of The Last Jedi, Kylo Ren was one of the best things about that movie for me, and to see his fall, his conflict, his struggle, and then his rise with his family. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to get Han, a Han Solo Force Ghost cameo, because obvious reasons, um, but it will be... A fitting end, I think. Um, I'm trusting in JJ J. J. to to really, how shall I put this? To really close it off. The Force Awakens played it too safe, too nostalgic, and played it way too safe. Then you've got the Last Jedi that was way too different. So they've already done what fans don't want and what fans want. So they can't do much worse if you think about it. So I'm really hoping that JJ can pull it off. And give us a good movie. Like, I, I don't mean to sound like an entitled fan. But come on. You know the, the, the six movies. Not the spin-offs and whatever. The six movies. They had elements of story and fan service rolled into one. But the fan service benefited the story. The Force Ghosts at the end of Return of the Jedi brought everything full circle. So do that. Because this is the biggest problem with the sequel trilogy. That ending scene used to mean so much more it now doesn't so you've got to make it mean something again and for anyone who gets on to me about that it's basic facts you just just tell me how you feel when you rewatch that scene and then you, you you go and see Han killed off then Luke running away right tell me how it makes you feel and that we never got the the OG crew all together again that's the biggest missed opportunity of this this trilogy However, I'm trying to remain positive, so let's just be positive here. If you want to comment about that, you can comment about that. All discussion is good. Um, but I really hope that this movie goes out on a high, and it's not the final Star Wars movie we're getting, you know? It's just the last of the Skywalker bloodline. So, the the thing is with option two, you if you keep Rey, Poe, Finn, Kylo Ren around, and the new characters like Rose... Uh, 3PO even, Chewie, you know, you can, how do I put this, you can still bring them back for future installments, if you wanted to do a trilogy 30 years from now, because, you know, that's the thing, as much as we love these franchises, they'll be here long after we're gone, because there'll always be someone to pass them down to, there'll always be a legacy, there'll always be a person that takes over, um, you can carry on with that, you can do that, or, you can do another trilogy after this and just focus on Rey and Kylo Ren with the New Order. Or you can literally just leave it on a good ending and just leave it there. And then tell new trilogies. We've got Ryan Johnson's trilogy in the works. Um, we've got the Benioff Weiss trilogy, I think, still um, floating around. We've got uh, The Mandalorian. Um, we've got Clone Wars Season 7. Resistance Season 2, final season as well. Um, then we've also got Kazian, uh, the Kazian series. So there's lots, lots to look forward to within the Star Wars realm. So it's not all over. And on Ryan Johnson's trilogy, I would also like to say... You, look at it like this. I don't really... I can't be asked for this whole SJW stuff anymore. It's, it's just a political ideology by a group of people. And then other people make it worse by complaining about it. I just judge the movie as the movie, you know? The movie decision of making Luke Skywalker run away to an island. That's just what... I never really enjoyed. Okay, that's just my view as a film and a filmmaking level, not a gender level, an actual filmmaking level. Because you know, I'm a film analyst. Um, but you know, I've made peace with it, and it is what it is. Um, so I have no doubt that Ryan Johnson's trilogy will be a fun watch because if he uses characters that no one knows. The risks that he took in The Last Jedi, people would love. And I'm telling you that straight up. People would love it. Because it's it's unexpected. You have no idea what's going to happen. I think it's only because it's happened with beloved characters that we feel so strongly about it. And I think people sometimes need to come down to earth a little bit, you know, and just realize at the end of the day it's only a movie. You know, it's, there's still loads of Star Wars to enjoy. Or, you you know, you, you can have a head canon if you want, of what you prefer. You can, If you want the legends to be canon in your brain, you can you can do that. No one's telling you no. 
I know Disney have decanonized it, but it was never canon to begin with. Um, but I don't know. I think the whole canon thing should be scrapped anyway. But I suppose it creates like a really like linear, makes sense kind of story. It has rules to follow. So there is that. But yeah, guys and girls, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Do you think Kylo Ren should survive this? Um, because I, I really want him to. I really want him to, and I think it's it's most beneficial for the story and the plot if he survives. Um, but yeah, comment down below, let me know, and what are you most excited to see in the um, saga going forward? And I have no doubt in my mind that that trailer is going to release the minute I go on holiday. I'm, 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 I'm watching you, Disney. I'm watching you. But uh, yeah, I will see all of you. In another video soon. Peace. Oh, what I could do is I'll try and record it um, while I'm away. Uh, I'll try and re record it with my laptop if need be. And then just upload it onto my phone. And then stick it on YouTube. But it might be without the video until I get back though. So that might be a problem. But yeah, see you in another video folks. And the force will be with you. Always. Thank you for watching the video guys, really appreciate that. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscription button to stay up to date when I do any more videos like this, and comment down below what video you want to see. Do you want to see me react to something, or do you want to see me talk about something? Comment down below, let me know, and I will see you in another video soon. May the force be with you. Always.